Hi guys, welcome to another episode of Ultimate Bucket List, and on today's show, I'm here in Budapest, the capital city of Hungary. Historically, this city used to be two, Buda on the left hand side and Pest on the right. But due to various skirmishes, these two cities are now one, and it's an amazing city to go around. But to get around the city, you'll need to use the metro stations. Now it's dead easy, some of these stations are ancient and some of them aren't, but in theory if you get a day pass or several day pass, it's very easy to use and it's the best way to get around Budapest. I should probably start by telling you about the building over there. The Hungarian Parliament Building. This is pretty much the most iconic building here in Budapest and probably what it's most famous for. And no matter where around the building you go, it's very picturesque. You'll spend a lot of time taking photos and videos of this place because it's so beautiful. But can you actually go inside? The answer is yes, but you have to buy a ticket way in advance. I managed to get a ticket for the last tour of the day, but unfortunately, the tour's in Spanish, a language I don't understand. So once you make it past security, they lead you around the hallways of the Parliament building, which are pretty ornate as they're covered in pretty much gold and artwork, and that's a recurring theme that you'll find here in the Parliament building. I would have enjoyed this tour a little bit more if I had a damn clue what the tour guide was telling me, but overall it was still cool to look at. This is the front entrance, which as you can imagine is very grand, and if you ever wanted to know what that big dome thing is in the middle, it actually houses this, where those two guys are walking around in a big circle. They're guarding the crown jewels. Now admittedly, the Hungarian crown jewels are pretty cool, but they're not a patch on Queen Elizabeth's crown orb and scepter, so yeah, it's still cool though. You get to see where all the politicians have their meetings and stuff like that, which is pretty grand. And you actually get to see the parliament section itself, where they actually sit. And once again, it's pretty cool, but I didn't have a damn clue what the tour guide was telling me. It's still a good tour to go on, even if you don't understand a word of it, but I actually learnt more from the museum afterwards, so I highly recommend that you take your time to explore the museum at the end of the tour. After this, I ended up going into St. Stephen's Basilica. You can spot this place a mile away, and apparently you can meet Jesus here. Yay Jesus! But when I went in and try and find Jesus, unfortunately I couldn't find him. What I could find though, is this ornate basilica. And as you can imagine, here in Budapest, everything is decked in artwork and gold. Seriously, these guys really overdo it with the artwork and gold, but it's pretty cool to look at. This is a human hand in a box. No, I'm not kidding, this is the holy right hand of Saint Stephen, of whom the basilica is named after. Seriously, there's a right hand of a guy in there! But if you get bored of having a look at a human hand, try climbing the roof of the basilica. You'll need a ticket that will take you to an exhibit, which, eh, it's okay. But once you climb the stairs, you'll see what the basilica roof actually looks like from the inside. And from the outside, you get some of the most beautiful views of Budapest, a 360 degree view of the city. If you're not good with heights, this is probably not a good idea, but if you are good with heights, this is pretty cool. This is the synagogue. I had a problem with them charging tickets where a St. Stephen's Basilica was free, so as you can imagine, I didn't go in, but apparently it's worth a look. Budapest is famous for its bathhouses that are powered by thermal water heated underground. I reckon the best place to do this is here, the Zakenyi bathhouse. It has a collection of outdoor and indoor pools, and the building itself is actually quite ornate. But once you've paid your money and received your electronic watch, you'll be astounded at the amount of pools that are around this bathhouse, and it's all thermally heated with this magical water with all these healing properties. 
So it's kind of weird being outdoors in a thermally heated pool, but oh my God, this is actually kind of cool. And if you're here in Budapest, I highly recommend that you come and do this because I actually wasn't planning to come here, but yeah, I'm actually glad I did. You can even drink beer and play chess with the locals if you want to. And speaking of beer, you can be covered in the stuff. Huh, how cool. But you'll be in awe at the amount of indoor pools, outdoor pools and steam rooms and saunas, all powered by this magical healing water. Even though I didn't feel like I was healed of anything, it was a great place to spend a few hours. This is Vajahunyad Castle, and apparently this was an inspiration for Count Dracula's castle, if you can believe that. Now, the castle itself, there's not much to it, admittedly. There's this lovely chapel, whereby you can take lots of pretty pictures and go inside for a little prayer if you want to. There's a museum, which is okay. I ended up not doing it in the end because I was kind of all museumed out. And there's this weird statue of a deathly looking figure. Yay death. Right next to it is a park and right next to that is Budapest Zoo. So if you wanted to go to a park or a zoo for the kids, you can do. This is Hoshak Ter, aka Hero Square. This is a giant memorial of Hungarian heroes from yesteryear, all immortalized in stone. It's pretty cool to look at and find out the history of these guys, but ultimately this place is a lot more interesting at night. As mentioned earlier in the video, this used to be two cities, Buda and Pest, and they were joined together by one single bridge which is this one, the Chain Bridge. It's a very pretty bridge, guarded by these stone lions, and it looks better at night than it does during the day, but ultimately, it's a bridge. Apart from walking across it, there's really not that much to see, although there are many other bridges, nine in total, that link Buddha to Pest. Climb the hill and you'll reach this, the Citadella, the fortress that's high on a hill overlooking Budapest, and they have their own version of the Statue of Liberty here. There's a few statues and a few memorials, which kind of acts like a sundial, but you're mainly up here for the view over Budapest itself, which is staggering. So guys, the view from up here is pretty damn amazing. I mean, I don't know if you can see that behind me, but that's Budapest pretty much from up high. So I highly recommend that you come up to the Citadel I know it's a pain in the ass to walk up, but definitely, definitely worth it for the views. So once you've explored the citadel and decided to climb all the way back down, it's time to get lost trying to find the next attraction, which is this place, Buda Castle. Buda Castle was originally the home of the royalty here in Hungary, and it's high up on a hill, so unfortunately you're going to have to climb a crap load of stairs. But once you do get to the top, it's actually kind of cool. You get some amazing views from up here, so be prepared to take lots of pictures. And you can even see that it's heavily guarded, even though these guards don't actually do anything. You can actually skip the stair climbing by using the vernacular, but to be honest, it's a little expensive and you're better off using public transport. Although the view from this thing is actually kind of cool. Hey look, it's the changing of the guard. Okay, it's not exactly as grand as what you'd see in Buckingham Palace, but still pretty cool. It also houses the National Gallery and the Buddha History Museum. Now, I actually went to the museums, and to be honest, some of it was great, some of it was incredibly hella boring, but overall, meh, it was alright if you're into that sort of thing. It wasn't all bad though. So guys, I've just finished the tour um, at Buddha Castle, and I gotta admit, the, not great, you know, only see it if you're really that interested in history and arts museum and stuff like that, but in general, meh. But this place is absolutely huge and honestly, I'm actually kind of lost because of how big this place actually is. It's really, really big. Buda Castle seems to go on and on and on and, well, on. 
and to be honest, they're actually building new parts for it, so it's going to be even bigger than it is now. Down the road from Buda Castle is this church, and it's a pretty ornate looking church with a massive bell tower. You can see it from everywhere, and it kind of looks like something out of a fairy tale. Be sure to explore the area and- oh, hello girls! Boy, oh, you're really friendly. This is Fisherman's Bastion, and this allows you some of the best views of the Hungarian Parliament building across the water, and it's actually kind of pretty in itself. I highly recommend paying the extra 3 euros to kind of go around the top bits of the Bastion, because you get some unique perspectives and some unique views that you won't get at ground level. And I highly recommend that you help other tourists take pictures as well. The church itself, as you can imagine, is very grand, it's ornately decorated from literally floor to ceiling, and surprise surprise, everything is covered in gold and artwork, which seems to be a recurring thing here in Hungary. Take your time to explore this church guys because it's actually kind of cool, and once you climb up the stairs and to the sides of the building, you'll quickly realise that this must have taken a phenomenal amount of work to complete, especially seeing as though all this was done by hand. Boy, this is a lot of work. These guys must have spent ages doing all of this. But anyway, once you've had a sit down and had a little quiet prayer, it's time to climb the bell tower of this place. Now, admittedly, if you're not fit or if you're claustrophobic, this is a bad idea. But halfway up, you do get to see an exhibit of this bell tower and this church, and you get to see some cool exhibits before reaching the top talking to a few fellow Brits and seeing a 360 degree view of Budapest, and you are rewarded with some amazing sights. I highly recommend that you do this if you're not at all claustrophobic, because the views are pretty damn good. Especially a fisherman's bastion down there, which is awesome. But once you've had enough of that, it's time to say goodbye and go down the stairs without hopefully breaking your neck. You can see the bell tower halfway down, and I suppose that's kind of cool too. But when Budapest turns from day into night, that's when the city really shines, quite literally. I mean, I know I've added some colour correction to these videos, but to be honest, it pretty much looks like this. Pretty much everywhere is very picturesque and very scenic, and you'll be in awe at how beautiful this place is at night. Seriously, it really does look like that. And the nightlife here is actually pretty good as well. You won't be short on anywhere to eat, drink, take pictures or whatever, and I highly recommend that you do visit some of the sites that you've seen during the day, at night, because ultimately, they look significantly better. Take your time to explore the city at night because it's definitely, definitely worth enduring the cold for especially Hoshek Ter, the Hero Square. It's a lot more interesting at night. So, if you're a fan of photography, videography, this city is a photographer's dream. And if you're not into that, I highly recommend that you visit anyway for a taste of Eastern European culture, and it's a cool place to go and add this to your European bucket list. Okay, Nin, I'm sold. What do I do? Well, you need to come here to Budapest, Hungary. The airport is just 15 miles away from the city centre, and to get from one to the other, you'll need to take bus 100E from the airport to Deak Ferenc Ter station, which is the main station here in the city of Budapest. From there, you can take a metro line pretty much anywhere in the city. The cost? Well, it's a typical European city with a typical European cost. The attractions are well priced, and local food and drink is reasonably priced as well. Obviously, if you get imported stuff, it's going to cost you a bit more, and the transport costs are okay as well. Speaking of which, the best way to get around the city is via the metro system. I highly recommend that you buy full day passes as opposed to buying single tickets, because that will save you a hell of a lot of money. These tickets are also valid on the street trams and buses, so if the metro system doesn't go there, I'm sure a street tram or a bus will. Don't bother with taxis because there are horror stories of people getting ripped off by taxi drivers. If you're looking for a place to stay, 
Stay nearest to a metro station if you can, and the closer you get to Dayak Ferenc Ter Station, the better. Is there anything else? Yes, Budapest is an incredibly hilly city, so I hope you've got a good set of legs in order to climb the hills, walk the streets, because it's pretty bumpy. Budapest is a bigger city than you think, so you'll be walking around quite a lot. I highly recommend using public transport where you can, especially around Buda Castle. It's a legal requirement here in Hungary to carry ID with you at all times. If a policeman stops you and you're not carrying any form of ID, they're going to make life really, really uncomfortable for you. If you have enjoyed this video, please be sure to like, share and subscribe. Comment on the comment section below and if you've got any other ideas for bucket lists, tweet them at me and if I get enough suggestions, I'll make a video about it. So guys, thank you very much for watching and we'll see you in the next episode. Play the dude, play the dude. <laughs> yeah, you just need a beer in your hand and you'll be fine. <laughs>